Let's get started with music manipulation. One of the oldest and arguably the most symbolic ability to date, allowing you to command armies, inspire intense emotions, and entertain all who hear you, users of symphokinesis can create, shape, and manipulate music. <laughs> now, we all know what music is, un unless you're deaf. And even in that case, that might not be completely true. So for those of you who aren't deaf or just like hearing me repeat the same bit in every video, music in its simplest of terms are vocal and or instrumental sounds combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. Now, obviously that definition is very subjective, but being an art form whose medium is sound and silence, its common elements are pitch, which governs melody and harmony, rhythm and its associated concepts, tempo, meter, and articulation, dynamics, and the sound qualities of timber and texture. Now, this might sound like gibberish for those of you who aren't music majors, but hey, blame the musically inclined. It matters to them and a user of this power, so I'm including it anyway. And to be honest with you guys, there really isn't a lot that this power can't do. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of redundant <laughs> because most powers can either create, mimic, or associate themselves with other powers in this giant interconnected web-like manner. And if you guys are probably thinking, Shay, come on, man, this can't be that much different than sound manipulation, right? Well, you would be sort of right, but if you wanted to ignore a nearly fundamental aspect of human existence, then yeah. But please believe me when I tell you that music is really an, it's like an eldritch entity in its own league, completely separate from sound, but kind of similar, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know, I know, I gotta shay explain it, so let me go ahead and do that. But in order to do that, I gotta be honest with you guys. Again, I know, I know, I hate honesty time. I know you guys do too, and I don't blame you, but it must be done. So here's your warning. Be wary of what you're gonna witness here, and keep your head on straight, because the info here will try to seduce you into a lifestyle you can't afford. Don't fall for it and don't sign any contracts that you're presented with either. Who knows, there might be a little bit of a soul theft problem and nobody wants to give up their soul. All you guys gotta do is hit that like and subscribe button. No signing over your life, no going into debt. You guys can just focus on my musical vocals and just relax. But if you like to play chicken with your ear and possibly your eternal existence, then at least hit that share button to spread that little bit of info to others so they can not do what you're gonna do. If you're just here for the applications, associations, uses, and users for this power, then skip ahead to this time. But if you want to hop on the soul train with your boy, then uh, I, I guess watch your step. It might be a little bit of a high problem. Buttons of music, oh boy, <laughs> definitely conflated with a lot of different things. And just like the more simplistic concepts I've done, this concept will be fairly easy and pretty interesting to provide some background on because the basis of all music is sound and the basis of all sound are vibrations. And because vibrations are everywhere, which they are, and sound itself are audible vibrations that exist everywhere, the rhythmic shaking and rattling of these vibrations and the tempo and varying pitches of the tone and sound can be called music in some cases, other cases it can be called gibberish. And music itself first arose in the Paleolithic period because the vast majority of prehistoric instruments that later evolved into musical tools that we use today have been found in Europe and date back to around the Upper Paleolithic era, which is around 12,000 to 15,000 years ago, give or take. Because of that fact alone, the study of music has translated to other subcases of study, with the biggest perhaps being history, sometimes called historical musicology, which is a discipline of musicology that studies music from a historical point of view, or musical communication, which is kind of self-explanatory, but can be looked at as a link to the origin of poetry and later on, actual forms of literature. But if we wanted to look at the fantastical view of music and history, there are numerous entities on both sides of the human-based morality scale that have had this concept in their domain, ranging from sun deities like Apollo of the Roman and Greek gods to death deities like Osiris of the Egyptians, uncountable amounts of fertility gods and goddesses and spirits of every culture because sex and music have always gotten along apparently entities of nature like certain mother earth xps or in some interpretations even the favorite celestial guardians of supreme deities like angels 
lead their own choirs of singing warriors that continuously sing praises to their respective deity, or even creatures such as sirens or harpies, <laughs> as well as devils or demons who do deals in liminal domain, meaning areas that are on the border of something like the normal world and the spirit world, like a crossroads or something like that. But regardless, all of those mentioned and many more I didn't mention have played with this concept and thus the power in one way or another, at least to our legends and mythology. Because this power is so similar to sound, thus making it similar to vibrations, I'm going to try to stick to the purely musical based aspects of this power and cover as much as I can without spilling too much crap about the other two. There's no need to repeat myself, those two are videos of their own. So with all that being said, let's get the factual mumbo jumbo out the way. The mechanical vibrations that can be classified and interpreted as sound, which can later be turned into music, can travel through all forms of matter gases, liquids, solids, and plasmas. <laughs> and the matter that supports the music is normally called the medium. And just like you learned in school, I hope, there are several common elements, I guess you could call them, behind sound and later music, which are pitch, which governs volume, melody, and harmony, rhythm, it's pattern, the concepts of tempo, speed, meter, the length of time the music lasts for, and articulation, how clear the music is. There's also dynamics, the motion or intensity of the music when it's being played, and last but certainly not least, the sonic qualities of timbre and texture, which also refer to the quality of the sound. Music, sound, and or vibrations travel much faster through solids than through liquids and gases because the molecules of a solid are closer together. <laughs> Therefore, it can transmit the vibrations, aka energy, aka music, much faster. But when music is moving through a medium that does not have, uh, let, let's just say consistent physical properties, it can be refracted or redirected by either absorption and or dispersal, which is why some songs sound kind of funny and distorted depending on the environment or when you yawn and stretch. And to continue from that point, it would make sense that music cannot travel through a vacuum, aka a space with no matter in between. But then again, because it's based off vibrations, that might not be completely true. When people think of vibrations, you know, those of a sonic variety, aka music, it always gets associated with the sense of hearing and to a lesser extent, touch and feeling. But why does it have such an effect on us? Well, those two senses more than any other sense. Well, nerds and nerdettes, at the risk of sounding like someone from the 70s, the answer is as simple as as simple can get. Vibrations. Check my video out on that. The link is in the description. All music being a form of vibrations and vibrations, aka movement, being necessary for the production of energy and life, that at least points us in the right direction of understanding why this concept is so integral to human existence. <laughs> Think back to our ancient ancestors, you, you know, the less civilized kind, or those who were more civilized than others but still seem like savages to us. A common thing to do was wage war, because resources really ain't that cheap. And in order to fund an empire, you need resources. Well, in order to get those resources, you're more than likely going to need to wage war. And to wage war, you're going to need people to actually fight that war for you. But they honestly can't expect you to fight and command yourself, right? That, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. So in order to inspire those to fight for you and your, I mean, their glory, you make them patriotic. I mean, <laughs> from the earliest times, singing together has always been an enjoyable activity for humans. So the best way to do that is to start them off with a chant, a form of inspirational praise, if you will, something that resonates with them and what they stand for or what they're trying to fight for. Something that's unique and displays your culture for anyone who hears it. And <laughs> it's got to be full of repetition. You can't ignore that. Now, all that's left to do is get the most basic of tools and just slap them together in some form of a rhythmic fashion. If you accomplish this task more or less the right way, you should notice the increase of vigor and determination in your troops. But you, you did? That's great! But I bet you're wondering why. Well, because of vibration, silly. The waves of energy being emitted stimulate the human body in ways we still haven't fully mapped out, even to this day with all our fancy technology and all. In our modern times, some experts refer to it as vibrational sound therapy, which is why playing music or drums in the case of an army helps maintain the marching pace and morale of your troops, or why militaries have group chants called military cadence or cadence calls, or why it's hard pressed to find anyone who celebrates anything without music or some form of rhythmic sound, whether it's a funeral, a wedding, a sad commercial about puppies, or an inspirational speech from a 
politician or pastor. You'll always find trace amounts of music that fit the theme and as a byproduct affect the emotions of the target or those being targeted. If you think about that aspect of this power alone, then it's pretty obvious that music symbolizes a form of stimulation. And from a logical view, even human bodies have their own form of rhythm, from the beating of your heart to the flowing rate of your blood to exactly how you place your foot every time you take a step, even how you breathe has its own rate. An outside source of vibrations, aka movement, aka energy, disrupts it in ways we both enjoy and dislike, depending on what type of music is played. But on the other side of the scale, playing or listening to music can be described as what's called a spiritual experience, simply because it just makes people feel. It can soothe the mind or excite, it can make you feel tough when walking through a crowd of unknowns, or it can be used to communicate or transfer information that can last throughout time and survive changing hands with dozens of cultures. This refers to the term song as it was originally used in days past to mean tale or story. Because of that, many religions or organizations that had high priest or the equivalent owner of said dignified position could be considered famous much like the artists and composers or songwriters of today because they had the exclusive and special ability to make music or simply put pass on tales or fables from the past in a catchy way as reading and writing weren't really all that common for people of you know past human history shoot even today if you want to get honest it's way easier to memorize important historical events as a song or a poem or even a nursery rhyme and then pass knowledge on that way that kind of explains famous nursery rhymes such as i don't know oh ring around the rosy which is a song about the bubonic play and because the human brain is wired to look for patterns and gravitates towards things that bring it joy and simply just make it feel if you want to look at it in a dark kind of way, this is essentially the number one way to control and manipulate the beliefs, culture, or even how a group perceives and interacts with the world. A practice, mind you, that's still done to this day in TV shows, various songs from musical artists, all the way to literature taught in the education system. <laughs> so we can add in addition to music symbolizing stimulation, it also symbolizes the control and transfer of information. But it doesn't stop there because in order to be stimulated, the transfer of information can't be done unless there's someone to get the ball rolling. And this process of transferring information to those you <laughs> stimulate, aka play music for, would obviously get you noticed. And anyone who was, I guess, too good at stimulating others with the transfer of information, aka playing music, was given the side eye more often than not. This also brought in the question of a possible disruptive influence they or their work might have on anyone else or society as a whole. This is where legends of the devil's sonata or artists entering into a Faustian bargain in order to become better musicians at the cost of their own soul come from. As the mastery of music, like anything else, takes time and effort, and if it looks like you didn't put in that time or effort the way we subjectively think you should but you can still stimulate others just as well as a metaphorical master player it would give them more well let's just say imaginative people cause for suspicion but getting back into music as a superpower popular culture has shown ironically even though this ability is extremely closely related to sound unlike sound which is a concept that you need to tell others about versus being shown <laughs> literally music is a concept that can be viewed as both showing and telling. As popular culture has shown this ability being used as a form of supersonics all the way to the user being a musical magician or a musical assassin. With the go-to way of portraying this ability is through musical instruments or the display of musical notes and to a lesser extent they might take a note out of sound manipulation and just show the attacks as invisible waves of rippling energy that spread outward but it's better to use a form of a musical instrument to differentiate the two. But no matter how you want to show it, the advantages of such a combat style include invisible attacks, toward the target obviously, that also happen to move at the speed of sound and make it difficult to be blocked or evaded by conventional methods like other weaponry or other powers. However, this is normally traded off with a high required skill level, especially when it comes to aiming sound waves because, like I said before, they spread outward. You'll normally find a user of this ability singing or playing instruments that can control others or the environment. <laughs> they might even be able to mimic the effects of other powers via the specific notes that they play. But 
and I just say but, I would consider, this is just me, a user at that level to just be scratching the surface because if one was good, aka creative enough, you could play notes that can reach out into the universe and control fundamental forces, warp reality, and calm, hypnotize, or command gods and eldritch beings of unfathomable power. The character could encounter a being, environment, or situation that possesses the properties of a brown note, which in its simplest form is something that the target is not supposed to hear. Also, it'll cause horrible, unknowable side effects. Some mediums that dip into the metaphysical take this concept and crank it up to 100 by stating that some, if not all, parts of their existence are just being recounted as a ballad of a sort. You know, a story song, aka music, aka vibrations. Remember, everything is all vibrations. Look up Nikola Tesla, he says the exact same thing. And as an added bonus, since sound, aka music, aka vibrations, can travel through the air, ground, water, and any form of medium, one, this gives the user a form of enhanced senses either through sensing sound or vibrations through the notes they play or because they can actually visualize the sound that they're playing. And two, defense by using physical barriers is extremely difficult because vibrations can also travel through and affect things at a molecular level. So this allows the music to affect you even if you can't hear it, you'll still be able to feel it. Common colors associated with music sort of agree that gray or black was associated with sadder music and lower tones and pitches, whereas, uh, was it a red, yellow, and green, and maybe blue, were associated with happier and faster paced music. There does exist a concept called chromasthasia, or sound to color synthesinasia, which is a type of synthesinasia in which sound involuntarily evokes an experience of color, shape, or in some cases, movement, which can give this ability a more uh, intricate and psychological theme and fits in perfectly with music. Users with this power are portrayed to be charismatic, seductive, manipulative, energetic, creative, and or crafty, <laughs> fairly ambitious, and are stereotyped within their particular mythology as being very proactive and a free spirit in most cases, while at the same time having a wide reaching influence or being easily accessible. Remember the liminal domains I told you about before. And for some reason, music is considered the most capable form of creative expression when it comes to defeating the forces of evil because, stereotypically speaking, evil is pretty boring, straightforward, uninspired, and pretty despotic or dictator-like in most cases. And because of music's real-world effects of bringing varying groups together that would have never done so otherwise, it has created the music has the power to save the world trope. And in many lighthearted mediums, situations that consist of awkward tension or boring exposition or even the final battle between the forces of positivity and the forces of negativity can lead to a dance off, a rap battle, a battle of the bands type screaming match or straight up turn into a campy musical. This also refers to the many works of dystopian fiction in which characters fight for their right to rock or party or dance or whatever it's seen as long as it involves music. Common stats for this extremely popular and widely used ability are medium to high levels of attack power, medium to high levels of speed. This aspect is normally accompanied by a sonic boom as it's fairly common for a musical person to break the sound barrier or have extremely quick power activation time. Medium to low levels of defense because this is arguably an extremely offensive power, but music can do whatever you want, so it could arguably be higher than that. An immense potential for creativity and versatility ranging into the infinite. Now, because this ability shares so many similarities with others, such as vibration manipulation or sound manipulation, I'm going to try my best to get as close as I can without giving away too much because those two powers are definitely going to be or already videos of their own. So, uh, Let's continue. With the ability to control music, it would be a fair assumption that you have greater than average levels of melodical proficiency via enhanced musicianship. And with your enhanced levels of musical intuition and control, it would make sense that you're able to perceive it as if you're able to perceive light and sound with sound wave perception. But what if you have more talent than that? Well, shift that power outward and with your grace and mercy, allow your target or individuals other than yourself to visually perceive sound waves with musical visualization. And from there, you would be able to attack with, defend with, and control music with musical attacks. 
From there, there are numerous ways that this can be done, and the first is by using the most natural instruments that most creatures possess, allowing them to manipulate music with their own vocal box via voice manipulation. If you want to save your breath, literally, then just grab the nearest guitar, drum set, triangle, or use whatever you can find and make your own killer tunes with it via musical instrument manipulation. This ability can literally be anything. And with all these ways of creating music, it makes sense that we can add music generation as you would be able to create your own source completely separate from outside sources and to a greater effect. But if you want your melody to do more than just make grown men cry, then give your now visible music notes a form of mass and density with musical animation. <laughs> I got you guys with that one. Huh? And from there, this application will allow you to create shapes out of the newly solidified sound, both simple and complex, with symphokinetic constructs. The next step up from the previously mentioned applications will have a user of this power actually be able to transmit their ability and focus it over long distances so it doesn't lose quality or power with the increased distance via musical projection. And with projection comes the ability to control the actual processes behind the movement of the sound waves with vibration generation and manipulation. And since we mentioned vibrations, remember what I said earlier in the analysis about vibrations and how they affect the human body? <laughs> well, depending on where or how you play your music and whom you target, you could forcefully implant emotion into others with musical empathic projection. And if you're making them feel things against their will, emotionally I hope, that should lead you to affecting their physical by making sounds so mimetic that anyone who hears it can't help but dance and groove that night uncontrollably, or they just follow your commands with musical inducement. Or you can reverse that technique and in the process of playing music, give yourself a new subjective power up or ability depending on how you play and what the composition means to you via musical empathy. And since you're giving yourself a new power whenever you play your jams, it might just be me and I might be trying to make a weird connection here, but this definitely sounds like a form of musical empowerment. Or the user can take in outside sources of noise and negate all forms of incoming music as a necessary extension of sound with sound absorption, which can also double as a form of sound nullification. While higher tier users are not only able to empower themselves with music, but since they can absorb it, it would make sense that you can infuse the element into your life energy that your body naturally produces with music aura. Take it a step further and you can transform your physical form into that of music with music mimicry. Take those powers and shift it outward and confuse all who witness you as you use whatever musical instruments you possess to conjure real items via musical creation. Or if you don't possess any tools at your disposal, then use the God-given instrument that resides in your throat with singing creation. And since you can use music to create things, that would also include creating a way for you to survive being harmed. So take that concept and recover your vitality to a slow jam via musical healing. But if you find yourself in dire straits and in need of instant repair, then forget the roadside assistance and piece yourself back together into your previously undamaged state with musical regeneration. While the best of the best, those that have mastered this ability and have no upper limit to its output, can tap into the instinctive flow of energy that all beings in existence uh, ride along, <laughs> whether you see them as vibrations, waves of energy, or invisible frequencies, all items that exist, exist within a particular rhythm. An example being the rate at which your heart beats, the pace at which someone walks, or how many steps they normally take before they have to stop, all the way down to the speed at which your nerves grow or repair, or how many times birds flap their wings during their flight. It also stretches into how many raindrops fall from your roof onto the ground, or how many times you blink within a minute. This essentially gives the users a form of synchronicity with the surrounding environment and can appear to resemble a form of enhanced senses via rhythm intuition. 
Well, with your new level of synchronicity, this should give you the ability to infuse magic or songs into whatever combative capability you possess with musical combat. But if you don't care for all the fingering and all the plucking that you're going to have to do to lay any kind of smackdown on the target, you can ignore the need to try and catch them and play a tune that induces a form of involuntary vulnerability, which can leave them open for a counterattack or be used to manipulate them mentally via hypnotic music. But if you rather avoid a confrontation altogether, there's nothing wrong with that, then transport your physical form from one location to another near instantly through the exclusive use of music via symphoportation. And since you can teleport, but you still need to be able to defend yourself of a sort, then create a sound and change the properties of said noise in order to create a new unpredictable effect with melodical property manipulation. So, for example, one with this power could theoretically place a sound on the target that can be transmuted into a physical entity. <laughs> so the user can turn the sound of a, I don't know, pen drop into the sound of a bomb going off and as a result, create said explosion made completely out of sound waves. So they're pretty much invisible. Or a more common example would be to make sharp sounds like the clashing of cymbals, the ringing of bells, or the smacking of tambourines mimic the effects of a sharp blade. Funny thing about this is you aren't changing the substance you decide to stick the noise to, you're just transforming the actual noise being created via melodic sound sculpting. This can also be done with just regular sound manipulation too. Or you can make an example out of one unfortunate listener and object and as a result discourage others by playing a tune of varying tones and pitches that destroys any who hear it or feel it since music is vibrations. The effects of this ability can range from simply dropping dead to being erased or phased out of the universe because of vibrations or having an object shatter apart on a molecular level because of vibrations. And because of vibrations, any user that can emit this ability has a higher than beyond average chance of penetrating most, if not all forms of physical defenses. Meaning, when it's played, it'll have a near instant hit effect via death song. And there you have it, music manipulation in a nutshell. Besides being an extremely powerful ability under the right conditions, you still have a pretty big weakness that you're more than likely can't avoid. And that number one weakness, is a medium, any medium. So as long as you stay put on a planet with an atmosphere or solidity of some kind, you can basically run around unchecked with this power. Although the propagation spreading outward of sound and music waves can be disrupted by wind, so users of air manipulation or void manipulation are natural enemies for a user of this power. You might also be unable to create music, only manipulated from outside sources, which <laughs> would really suck because uh, I'm playing music right now in this video and I don't even have powers. So if you can't at least do this and you have the actual powers, then uh, it's time for you to find a new career path. <laughs> and lastly, the user's own knowledge, skills and strengths will determine how far you go with an ability like this. And now with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Music manipulation is pretty dang useful considering how our existence more or less relies on it. So with no more extra filler, cause I hate filler, on a scale of one to 10, the Shea scaling system gives this power a screeching eight. Only because it relies on the existence of other mediums in order for it to exist in the first place, way more than sound or just vibration manipulation. So there's that. Thanks for watching. You guys think of any more applications for this power, jot it down in the comment section. If you want to see the entire unedited video with all the clips and examples that can't be shown on YouTube as well as future videos, then head on over to my Patreon and join up. Until then, nerd and nerdettes, I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.